Hello, hello. Welcome to Monday Mentor, where we today are going to talk about why self-awareness transforms your leadership. I'm Jen Whitmer, and I help teams and leaders solve conflict, cultivate communication, and create empowered teams so you can do more good work in the world. So today, we're going to talk about self-awareness, which is kind of this fuzzy term, but it actually is incredibly concrete. And that's what I want to help you learn today and see why and how self-awareness transforms your leadership. So when I was a leader in an organization, I had a new, let's just say CEO come in, a new head come into the situation. And he thought he was a very decisive person. And what we were experiencing was a complete lack of decisiveness. So we would sit around a table, um, a conference room table in our office, and we'd talk about things and we'd all kind of come to a conclusion and we would feel like, oh, we've made this decision and we're looking to our leader to say, yes, go or no, do this or let's keep talking. That's what we were looking for. And what invariably happened was, yeah, these are all really good ideas and nothing would nothing would happen. And when we would have conversations about it with this leader, he would claim decisiveness. I'm, I'm decisive. I'm making these decisions. I just don't want to micromanage. That was kind of his line. And what started to happen was it incredibly reduced the effectiveness of our team. It started to affect morale and eventually shaped our culture into one of confusion, lack of clarity and ineffectiveness, which creates all kinds of opportunity for gossip and just a pretty toxic work environment. Now, the problem, yes, was partly he wasn't very decisive, but the bigger problem was that he didn't realize that he wasn't decisive. And that is why self-awareness is so important. And there are all kinds of research from Stanford to a woman named Tasha Ulrich, and they discovered that self-aware leaders not only create more empowered teams, they also lead healthy organizations and they tend to get paid more. So I personally like all of those things, and I can imagine you do too. So let me know in the comments if that's something that you would prefer. Empowered teams, healthier cultures, and getting paid more and more productive work environments. That is the power of self-awareness. And when we aren't aware of what we need, then we don't get or ask for what we need. And that's why self-awareness is this foundational component of leadership. When they Stanford surveyed what is the number one skill leaders need? Of course, communication was up there, team building was up there, content knowledge, but the number one was self-awareness. So, okay, but what does that mean? <laughs> What is self-awareness and how do we get it? So that is what I'm going to work on today. I'm going to give you a little mini training on what is self-awareness and then how do we use that to transform our leadership? So we're going to start with what is called the Jahari window. I think when we're talking about these concepts that can be really out there, it's super helpful to have a model. I know we in business love a model, but also as a former educator, I love a model. That's how we how we learn best. And so we have concrete to model to idea. Let's bring it back to the model to help us understand that. So Jahari Window is a self-awareness tool developed by two men named John and Harrington. And so they put their two names together, which I just think is funny. But it has these four quadrants to self-awareness because self-awareness isn't just an idea. It actually has a really big purpose. So the first thing is what is known to self and known to others. Now, if you have spent a hot minute with me, you're pretty sure that I talk with my hands, even though we're only and I laugh quite a bit and I talk pretty fast um, and I'm kind of a loud laugher. Those things are out in the open. It's known to me. I'm aware. 
and you are aware and everybody is clear on those are some characteristics of Jen Whitmer. And that's what's in the open. And whenever we are trying to change, whenever we are trying to transform, whenever we are trying to grow, that space, the open space is the only place we can really grow. Because that means everybody is aware and we're out in the open to help. Now, I just want to clarify that doesn't mean everybody, but it does mean the people you are working with. So when it's out in the open, then you can do something about it because you can only change what you first acknowledge is there. And that's the power of the open space. So we're always trying to move when we go through these other three quadrants, we're always trying to move to that open space. Where is it over there? You can't, I can't point at it. So we're always trying to move to the open space. So the next space on the quadrant is what is hidden from others, but known to yourself. What's known to the self and hidden from everybody else we call facade because we are keeping that quiet, internal, private. We're not admitting it. And sometimes things are okay in, in that internal space. But you have to have some people that you are open with. And transparency and vulnerability in leadership is a powerful tool to help people connect to you, to see where you're going, and follow you. That is powerful. There was, um, I just read an article last week, and it's popping in my head, that the, um, the power of transparency in leadership is what connects your people to you. They can't follow you if they don't know you, if they don't know where they're going. And so that facade can inhibit your leadership. And so how do we get from facade to open? What is that? And that's self-disclosure. That's that transparency. I'm struggling with this a little bit and I want us to work together as a team to solve it. Or I feel uncomfortable about this. Tell me about what makes you comfortable with this decision. All of that is the power of moving facade to open. And then everybody can brainstorm together and create that empowered team. All right. The next one is what is hidden from you, but not to everybody else. It's known to others. And those are our blind spots. Those are the things that we don't know particularly how they're impacting other people or how they're inhibiting our own growth and development and effectiveness. That's our blind spots. We've all got blind spots. And that's why, I mean, that's why our cars have side mirrors on them, friends. That's, that's why we need to look at that side mirror and go, oh, that's what's in my blind spot. We teach kids all the time when they're learning how to drive, how to look over and find what's in your blind spot. So how do you get from blind spot to open? Like, how do you move from this blind spot space to the open space? That process is feedback, feedback and coaching. There was an article put out by Gallup just recently that talks about the most effective teams and managerial styles involve 20 minutes of coaching at least once a week, once a week getting some coaching, because that is this open space for feedback that brings you from the blind spot out into the open. It helps you become aware now and you can get feedback, you can get training, you can get skill building when you are suddenly aware of what's back here in your blind spot. Personality tools are really helpful in that space, especially ones like Strengths Finders, Myers Briggs that are showing you how and what you are doing and behaving. Colby, you know, how you impact others. Those tools and a good coach and feedback asking for feedback is how you move from the blind spot oop, over here from the blind spot to the open space where we can now do something about it all right so those two places are a little darker you're needing some help let me know in the comments what you think about about that i see i see you um and and how you move to that open space but what about this scary dark one over here what are we doing with that how do we know when it's hidden from us as ourselves and it's hidden from others? What do we do with that? That scary unknown spot. The unknown is where we have to do some investigation. We have to investigate 
what is hanging out in our heads? And we really have to do some questioning. And the tool I have found the most effective to help us kind of excavate a little bit is the Enneagram. While it is a personality framework, as I mentioned, personality frameworks help us see our blind spots. The Enneagram helps us understand the why. Why am I motivated to do this? Why do I think, feel, and act the way that I do? That, I think, is the power of the Enneagram. I've seen it time and time again in leaders and in teams when they discover, oh, this is my why. And what happens is it moves from the unknown to the facade, and you can start to deal with it for yourself and then choose self-disclosure. Sometimes it moves from the unknown up to the blind spot. If other people are also trained in the Enneagram and you have a, a common shared language, they can then give you some feedback and move you to open. But that's why we've got to have something to get into this spot down here of the unknown. And that is the power of the Enneagram. And when I was in this situation with this leader who was really indecisive and the problem was he was unaware that he was indecisive, there was also responses from me. And I was really struggling. And that is when I started understanding how the Enneagram, my Enneagram personality was moving me into a way I didn't want. And so I was frustrated by this lack of indecision and are not moving forward. And just that really gets my particular personality going. Well, once I started discovering that I could self-disclose and say, this is a problem for me because A, B, and C, I could clearly articulate because I want us to move to action. And I struggle when we don't move forward. And now, not just personality wise, I can see how this is impacting um, the goals and missions of our organization. And I could lay that out clearly. But without my personality part, it just felt a little bit... Um, impersonal. It it didn't have the vulnerability to connect and say, here is why this is a bigger problem. That is the power of understanding these four quadrants of self-awareness. And I love helping teams use this as well as the Enneagram and other skills to really create that empowered team. Because what I've discovered, I believe with all of my heart and have seen it happen in organizations that empowered teams begin with knowing ourselves. We have to start there as a leader and then as individual team members, because otherwise you don't know what you're attaching onto. You don't know how you're connecting. You're just kind of shooting in the dark and waiting to hope that our different roles and responsibilities will connect. But when you have the power of self-awareness and each individual person recognizes their own challenges and gifts and contributions they bring into the team dynamic, everything's out in the open. And you can put the puzzle pieces together. Everybody is engaged and feels like they're a part because they genuinely are, because things are out in the open. In order to create an empowered team, you have to have self-aware leaders and team members. And I love helping people work through that. So I hope that this was helpful for you today. The Jahari window is a powerful tool model to help us see why self-awareness can transform your leadership. But I also would love to help you and your team. So if you are interested and you would love a workshop, I would love to talk to you because I have a lot more to we can cover than just in 15 minutes on a Monday Mentor live session. So let me know because I would love to come help you create an empowered team that does amazing work. All right, everybody, if you've got more questions, drop them over here or there in the comments, depending if you're watching on the mobile or if you're watching <laughs> um, on your computer. And I will see you back next week with Monday Mentor with Jen. Bye, everybody.